Welcome back to another gig log. It's Nate from In The Mix Light and Sound. Again, thank you all for watching. We're trying something a little bit different today. Uh, we actually have an additional camera, but uh, let me give you some context of what's happening. So we are heading to uh, the largest festival that we do throughout the year called Riverfest. And you may have heard me mention it in a couple of previous videos. Riverfest is a three-day event. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we set up production for it, lights all for the main stage. There's also a secondary trail stage, which we provide some equipment for and, and some labor. Um, it is a fun event. It is an exhausting <laughs> event because it's a lot of hours that we're putting in. So again, to give you some context of where we're at right now, I have my trailer behind me. We're bringing up all the gear. Uh, today is Thursday. Not Friday, so I'm going up uh, about a day early just to get a head start on unloading some equipment, setting up some equipment. If you've seen some of the prior gig logs that I've done uh, at Muhlenberg Township at Jim Dietrich Park is the venue. You've seen that you know, they have their, their stage that they built that's uh, based off of a trailer or camper stage and they have a tent. Uh, so equipment is pretty much protected you know, from elements. Now, the weather reports, and hopefully not jinxing anything, but the weather is looking beautiful. We are at the end of August, and we're looking at some days in the, like the 60s and 70s up here instead of what's typically like 80s and 90s. So, uh, beautiful weather. There's not supposed to be any precipitation whatsoever. Again, knock on something here. So, with that said, it's gearing up to be a beautiful weekend. The band lineups are amazing this year. So, really looking forward to that. What we'll try to do for this gig log, since it's a three day event, I'll see how much footage I can get. Um, most bands are playing for about 90 minute sets, uh, and then there's half hour changeovers. So, even the you know in betweens the changeovers and all that are not as brutal as they could be you know a lot of festivals run have quick 15 minute changeovers which uh, you know really kind of stress you out sometimes you try to prepare for it as best you can but there's always a lot of variables that go along with that the uh, half hour time frame that this festival gives uh, is typically enough to not relax because we're still rushing but you know if there you know are artists that are having problems with a pedal board or something like that you know there's time a little bit of time baked in to do some troubleshooting or again to take time to make sure that things are set in a way that makes the band comfortable and the band doesn't feel like they're rushing to get on and, and you know rush through and, and try to get everything plus I also like the 90 minute sets because in my opinion you know, sometimes festivals only give about you know, 50 minute sets to, to bands sometimes or 45 minute sets and I feel as a as a musician myself a lot of times what will happen is you, know, you, you barely start feeling comfortable until you know about 20 minutes into a gig where you know you get used to the stage you get used to the monitors you get used to how everything says and you really how everything feels and you can really start you know, enjoying and, and, and playing as an entertainer so you know, with 90 minute sets you know, it really allows the entertainers to, to really settle in and you know concentrate on, on what they need to do which is performing so that's the setup for the festival again we'll try and get uh, as much footage as I can we're bringing out our, our, our larger board our M32 we're gonna have a separate mixing board we're bringing out our larger lighting rig with truss and I have some ideas for how I want to do the setup there, which will uh, uh, depend on, on what everything looks like when we get up there. And with that said, again, thank you for watching and stay tuned. Here we are on site again, back at Jim Dietrich Park for the Three Day River Fest. So if you've watched again previous gig logs, you'll see that uh, you know we have the old trailer stage here we have the red tent and we are by the river over on the right and we have the whole farmhouse view and again everything's just getting set up so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at uh, some of the uh, 
equipment that's here and start getting set up. All right, it's Friday morning and here's what we were able to get done last night before it got dark. So we've got some of the gears staged already. We've got our lifts already balanced and staged. We got our barricades up and my most hated part, but a necessity, we have our cable ramps out to where the front of house position is going to go and our cables already run. Um, for front of house cables, what I do is um, a little while ago I got different types of cable and essentially bundled them together uh, with friction tape. So that way I can run them all as one cable and they all come off of a spool which is right here so as you can see we basically are at the the maximum of what we have i think that they're all 150 foot cables but as part of that cable run what we have is power bundled we have a power con ethernet we have regular ethernet and then we have the uh, Behringer cable for the uh, for the snake for the M32, and that'll go from the DL32 or the monitor mixer uh, out to front of house. So keeping them bundled together kind of keeps things more efficient. Um, the real kind of love hate with it. Um, sometimes I still feel it's faster to coil, but with all these cables bundled together, it gets uh, quite heavy after 150 feet. So the uh, Real makes it easy to, to pay out and uh, somewhat, you know, when you're spooling it up at the end of the night uh, and you have to be careful with it, but I still think it goes a little, maybe a little faster than coiling, but I don't use it very often, so we'll see. And with that, we're going to get back to setting up and get our truss set up. We're going to get our front of house tents set up, get our mixer set up, start running audio. Let's talk lights for a moment. So for this rig, we're using our lighting truss, which we don't bring out too often except for the bigger, larger festivals. And rigged on this truss is uh, two types of fixtures. We have uh, Chauvet Intimidator trios, one on each end. And then filling the middle, we have uh, the sheds uh, 19 by 15 moving wash zoom and the way we connect is kind of a hybrid here so we start here um, the Chauvet intimidators have an in and out to them for power so we come over to the first sheds and then what we have is a combo cable here both dmx and power so it's power con out dmx out over to dmx in and power con in and then we just daisy chain down the, the truss there. These are LEDs, so they are able to handle that. They don't draw as much power as the old uh, incandescents and all of that. And we've been pretty successful with this. So uh, minimal cabling, uh, minimal running like power boxes and all kinds of things like that. It's just in and out, daisy chained all the way through uh, just to keep things simple. So I wanted to explain a little bit about how I do my monitor split. So we're looking at an X32 compact. This is going to be the monitor board for the weekend. Up at front of house we have our M32. And I'll get over there and do some video with that. What we're using for our main patch input is our DL32. And this board is the clock master. And I do that for two reasons. First off, this has the gain control. And I like that when I'm doing line checks up here on stage, I can dial in the gain uh, from a tablet or from this board and have it relatively consistent. And then I have trim up at front of house. So if I need to make any corrections later or anybody sandbag or anything like that, I can, I can adjust as needed. But here's the way I do the digital split. So first off, the DL has this cool feature where this is going into AESA of the DL32 the main or the front of house board is going into AESB. What the DL will do is take outputs 1 through 16 of AESB and push them through to the A port of AES as AES channels, uh, what would it be, I guess, 
33 through 48. So what I do on the monitor board then is I'll go into routing and we'll go to user and output. And then what I'll do is output nine through 16. As you can see here, I have chat, uh, nine and 10 go into AES nine and oh, there was a mistake there, AES 10. But then channels 10 through 16 are all ASA 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So 48 is front of house right, 47 is front of house left, 46 is mono send, 45 is mono send. Uh, that'll be, 46 will be the delayed mono send because once again we're doing our cardioid subs, our inline gradient array for subwoofers. And then what we do is we have uh, 45 is actually mapped to the, a talkback bus out of the front of house. So that way I can do talk back to the monitors from front of house. And then 44, 43 are additional matrix for any outfills that I, I might be running here uh, or infills. So that's the routing there. And it's worked for me great in the past. And I like having the monitor board be the brains of the operation because if something would happen to the front of house board for whatever reason if it loses connection if some little kid somehow manages to stomp and a cable somehow whatever you never know what might happen there i have a cable protectors there to keep it protected but just in case um, if something like that happens i'll lose front of house but from the monitor board all i have to do is change my patch back to my regular patch and then I can quickly dial in front of house here from the monitor board and just use the monitor board going forward if there's an emergency. All right, and here we are. The first band is starting to arrive. We got our lights set up. We got our front of house set up. Here's the good old M32. Um, and then I have laptop for tracks. And I got a little power converter. So, uh, you know, power strip rack and it's, uh, UPS here at front of house. Again, it's all running down the, the cables here. And we have a good old wolf mix for lighting control. First band is up and running. And the nice part about having a soundboard is that you got a place to put your snacks. Looking, uh, yeah, the band is doing an awesome job. Uh, a little trick I like to use is on the M32, to, you can't do custom layers on the X32 M32s, but what I really like to do is uh, they offer a DCA spill. So I'll just use a uh, dummy uh, DCA here, assign all the active channels to it, and in the case of this trio, we have our drums in the purple, we've got bass guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and one vocal. And now I have them all here on one layer, ready to go.
right, here we are setting up van number two. And with this group, they have their own engineer. So they're using our mic stands, some of our hardware, the house kit, um, but they're using their own wireless mics. And uh, they're just sending us a left, right, and sub feed. So our channels have gone from last band to now just three. All right, good morning with day two of Riverfest. So we're just down here now, uncovering everything. Got our front of house tent opened up. Get some of the uh, boards powered up, get some music running. Our speaker stacks are still tarped up. We're gonna go ahead and untarp those and already have some things set for the first band. Um, last band last night had their own in-ear, so we cleared off all the monitors so they had room, so I'm gonna put those back out. And that's it for this morning. So kind of an easy start to what will hopefully continue to be an easy day. Check one, two, check, check. Yep, check. That should be good, check. Thank you. Scarlet Begonias for it.
you. Thank you. And here we are, morning, day three and final day of Riverfest. So we're coming down, we're just about to get everything uncovered, untarped, get powered up and get ready for the day. We have about uh, two and a half hours before the first act comes on. And my goal before that time is not only to get the system up and running, get the wedges back in place but I'm gonna strike the lighting as the event ends at 7 p.m. tonight um, before it gets dark so we're not gonna need all the wash it just won't be as effective uh, we're gonna leave the truss up though because we have the sponsor bannership and all of that but the idea is to take down anything that we're not going to need for the day so that way it makes the pack up at the end of the night a little bit easier. Well, let's experiment with uh, some body cam footage here. See how that works out. Some point of view. Amazon Fire TV tablets, inexpensive certainly do the trick especially with uh, with mixing station here of course our lighting controller and we're gonna tear that down when we tear down the lights and off to the stage but first pick up our coffee ah. Our little table here, which we offered up as a merch table, but also to block this little gap here. Somebody left their sunglasses. And here we are. Stage is pretty nice and dry. Tent does a good job there. Uh, unfortunately, some of the precipitation drips down where I have the subs there. So we'll uncover those last and Give the uh, condensation some time to cook off there. Monitor world. Get some of this organized again. A little bit of condensation, major. Don't know if you saw this in previous videos, but this guy here, it's a big uh, clock I think I ordered off of Amazon and uh, works great for you know, just keeping musicians on schedule. 
uh, you know, convenience because now they don't have to run around and try and find, you know, dig their phone out of their pocket or anything to see if they're on time or what time it is. They can just glance over side stage here. And they've got the big old clock counting down. Actually, that is one of the, I haven't used that feature, but it does have a countdown feature on it. I guess if somebody starts going over at some point, maybe I can look at utilizing that. And my favorite part, folding up tarps. Always a joy. Uh, with one person. I think we'll set this to the side and wait for our helper to get here instead of struggling with it on our own. Good old X32 Compact. It was the very first digital mixer I ever bought uh, back when the X32 series came out. That was out for a little bit. I was eyeing it up. And then the ancillary mixers, I guess, came out. And this was one of my, my first purchases. And Oh, man, this thing has got to be maybe going on 10 years old at this point. Uh, doesn't get a lot of use these days, but uh, it still comes through in a pinch, and it's working great as the uh, clock master for everything, and great as a monitor board. All right, so let's switch on some power. So we have our tablets charging. We'll wait on number five because number five is going to the outfall here and powering this Meyer X40. And we'll go up and plug in some monitors. DB Technologies FMX15 here. Um, awesome, awesome monitor. And what I really like about it is um, it works great as a, a drum wedge because it keeps me from having to pull out subs all the time and you know have an additional subwoofer um, if this was a larger stage I'd probably still do a sub uh, monitor combo but since it is not this one works great and I haven't had a drummer yet who was upset about you know, not enough low end or kick or things like that through it so uh, the 15 uh, does a great job here See, so we have it set up with the uh, the dual cables here, um, both power and signal through one cable. Save some time. Then you have the FMX 12s. Gonna put one at either end. We're doing five wedges across the top, or across the front, and. The drum wedge so six total tidy this up a bit I always like to leave the slack on monitors I know maybe aesthetically it's not always the best but I like to leave the slack at the monitors so that if we do need to move like somebody who's gonna be down here we need to move it down here we can do all of that um, without having to redo our entire run here. Oh, this guy is a nice hidden gem too. Whirlwind Cat Dusa Catformer RJ45 Breakout. The nice part about this is that not only does it have combo jacks in, but it has DI or mic built in. So as a quick floater, a lot of time I'll use this at keys. Um, and it just runs down a Cat5, so four channels. Can be both microphone and DI. And you can switch them around. Last night, they're all on mic because we use them for the horn section, which had four inputs. So it's just nice to have a floater, bring it right here and set it where, where it was needed. So we'll do the same thing today. Set this guy to the side. Musicians. What do we got? We got our trash bin down here. Can we make it? Oh, overshot it just a little. Not a basketball player, obviously. All right, get this guy plugged in. 
Now all of these are running off of a um, rack mounted power strip there for power. So I can kill power to all the wedges uh, at one time instead of turning them on or off. And then also um, you know, we turn the power on and we're good to go. But that way I don't have to worry about, you know, if I mix something up where accidentally turn on a mixer and the monitors are on and then, you know, we start getting some crazy things happening that we don't want to happen here. This is the Cat 5. So we're just gonna reel this back in until we figure out where we need it. Set this guy right here. Alright, we'll get the rest of our wedges in. All our main lines are taped down and just to keep things from getting too messy around here. Because what tends to happen is guys will, and especially me, I'll jump up on and off the stage here. And your lines get tripped up on, uh, you know, the cables there and you end up pulling them off and all kinds of fun ensues. The power blocks here that you see running down um, are actually the uh, Seismic Audio power bricks. I decided to take a chance on these. It's 12 gauge cable, at least it's stamped that way. And it gives you a quad box every uh, well, I mean, five feet or so. There's about three, I believe, boxes total on it. Nope, four, four, one, two, three, four. It goes right down the line. Then I have them coming out for the distro to a quad box here, which we tap off for lights, uh, and then run it down. Same idea back here. And then we got the quad box running around here. Works out really well. Had the power strip for one of the guys last night who didn't bring his. Get that back in our good old Milwaukee pack out here. All right, so wedges are set and plugged in. Now let's go for the mains. So these black ratchet straps here that are used as kind of guy wires to keep the system from blowing around in the wind. Um, also doubled nicely for keeping the tarps down at night. There they are. Good old IGs. Have them set down low. We'll run music through and make sure that uh, everything's working before we hoist them up. Again, we'll save the tarps for when the helper gets here. Everything looks in good shape. Time for another swig of coffee. Ah. So now what we'll do 
and so we got our main breakers on power up in order the trip light which is a voltage regulator and then we have just the pile here um, has like a squid output in the back for power and it's nice for all the low voltage stuff and, and you get little nice things like a USB port out the top here it's supposed to be two amps let's make sure it's charging this guy's what nine percent right now it seems to be enough to when the screens blank it charges it but we were checking yesterday it didn't seem to necessarily maintain the charge uh, when you have the screen active so I might just get a, a power brick that has a little bit more power and then keep that running in so that's the tablet for dedicated to monitor world there Let's see if our clock is on there we are nine o'clock on the dot so we got 11 a.m. is when the first band begins I imagine they'll be showing up probably within the hour and looks like we're in good shape so let's get monitor board powered on One thing I don't like about the X32s is that when you flip the switch, they take a moment for the logo to pop up and I get nervous every time, just those couple seconds. But there we are. Check our routing real quick, make sure everything looks good. Make sure our, our user output is still run the way we need it to. So here's our user again bringing in what's really channels 10, yeah, I'm guessing 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The DL32 passes that from AESB to AESA, and then we're able to, using the user slot here, remap the outputs to bring in those. So it's main left, main right, or main right, main left, mono uh, sub, because we run aug subs, one, aug subs again. For the delay stack, we do the delay within the board itself. Then we have a talkback, and the way we run the talkback is for the la uh, front of house to be able to talk through the wedges. Um, we route the talkback to an unused bus on the front of house, so I think it's bus 12, and then on the outputs there, run bus 12 through so it comes in on the AES uh, 44 so we route that output uh, 44 to or that's how it's coming in and actually we don't have to route this at all in here um, we're kind of burning an output there for no reason because really what we do is do the augs remap and AUGS3 is actually configured to bring in A44. So that's actually the talk back from the front of house coming into the AUGS, and then we just bus send them the AUGS to the different wedges, and that kind of passes it right through. What I want to look into is uh, setting up uh, basically a squawk box here and at front of house. Uh, there's two ways I can do it. I can use the Cat5 to come down, and I can just you know run a mic in, and then an output here to a speaker so that we can talk back and forth to each other here at the different worlds, you know, same thing up there. But I also want to look and see if there's a way to be able to do it in the X32. I think I can, similar to how I'm routing this talkback, if there's a way to send another talkback down, like talkback B, um, down a different channel, maybe a different aux, and then I'll look at the control room and see if there's a way to route that in. So. Just some thoughts for the future there. All right, back to front of house. Make sure we have some music and don't forget the coffee.
coffee. Now we have power coming into this strip here, just a rack mount. And then we have our UPS. I'll turn that on. Looks good, it's receiving voltage. Now we'll come over here, reach in, turn on the X32, or I'm sorry, the M32. Up comes the logo, boom. DL32B, 48K, and I have a USB stick in there. Everything looks good. All right, let's power up the laptop for some background music here. And while that's powering up, it's coming through AUGs one and two, USB into the board. Let's go power up the speakers. So distribution here at this festival we basically have four circuits on four separate poles, <laughs> which not ideal, but we make it work. So the way I have this divided out is one speaker stack and two subs are on one circuit. Plug that in, it should power up. Second speaker stack is on this circuit. Sandy. That should power them up. Let's go take a look. And we have power. All of our settings are set. So let's run through some music, make sure it's working. We can send the mains. And we'll uncover the subs a little bit later once the tent stops dripping. Start the morning with some funk, and some wolf pack. So we'll bring up the augs a little bit here. Jump over to our mains and subs. All right, music there and subs. Subwoofers coming through. All right, fantastic. Oh, on to the next part. Band one is up and running.
Where will you go tomorrow? Where will you lie down? There's nothing you can borrow But you have the ground that you walk upon I caught some light at the gallows, let the memories die. I caught some light at the gallows, and let the memories Yeah, my friend celebrates 40 down there, and I'm celebrating all over me. Thank you so much. Thank you. The light, the light. So we finally made it to the end of Riverfest. So three days, got some good footage. Uh, the talent here this weekend was amazing. I always look forward to this. This is my biggest festival uh, that I have throughout the year. Uh, lots of compliments on the sound. I, I couldn't be happier. The organizers couldn't be happier and uh, everybody loved it. It's, you know, when you get a lot of praise, it's uh, it's very humbling. Um, so I, I I don't know what to say or respond to that. I'm I'm thankful every day uh, when I get a chance to do what I love, which is you know, really just listen to really good music and you know, do my little part of uh, of making it sound better. So we got everything torn down uh, in about two hours. I had a crew of three. There's some vendors leaving. <laughs> okay, great event. Always a good time. Um, yeah, so again, 
you know, had about a crew, uh, three others helping me, uh, had a monitor engineer helping me for the weekend. And you know, things went very, very smooth. The bands, as far as the turnovers, getting everybody up, getting everybody dialed in, happy doing the, uh, the split the way I did worked out great because I could adjust trims out front and compression and different things that I wanted to do versus uh, the monitors not affecting those. So it's, uh, you know, I know a lot of people like to do analog split and I understand that, wanting to have separate gains and separate control. And you know, I'm sure that's probably the way to, you know, definitely the way to do it. But you know, if you have a DL32 or something that does a digital split, uh, you can absolutely make that work for you. And you know, with uh, about 10 dB trim up or down, unless somebody's really sandbagging you or you have somebody who doesn't know gain staging very well, uh, you know, then you might have a problem. Uh, but everything, again, went smoothly. Um, we were done in about two hours as far as uh, getting everything torn down. So that included the uh, trussing I had to leave up, the lights I did take down this morning. So about two hours to tear down the barricades, to tear down the uh, front of house towers, front of house area, uh, and all the cabling and all of that. And we managed to fit it back into our trailer somehow, even being tired after three days. So Thanks again. I appreciate you guys watching this. Please, if this is your first time seeing videos, please like and subscribe. On to the next one.